Hi there. Hello. <laughs> I've never talked Hello, to you before Lindsay. in my life. How are you? I know. <laughs> complete strangers. Hello. It's so nice to finally meet you. You do <laughs> oh, great boy. work. Oh, it's been a rough time for you. I know we last spoke yes. a few years ago, but like, you gotta oh, remember me, please. <laughs> oh my god. I... <laughs> oh man. Oh, let's not even get into it. I'm Stephanie. Oh, can I introduce myself? Oh, okay. Please do. Uh, my name is Lindsay. <laughs> and welcome to Bet You Wish This Was an Art Podcast. I'm always welcome. here. I've been here the You're whole always here. time. I, so Elena is not with us today, n- namely because she hasn't been converted yet. But um, Lindsay and I, Lindsay, Lindsay Anton Wood of of the esteemed of the esteemed even art for this entire GD show is a uh, my hostage today. <laughs> uh, well, I think you'll find us maybe the other way around. But sure, it go might, for it. it. You think will. like you think yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one with the notebook <laughs> exactly that's what that's what i'm telling you here i've i've been in this for a long time Maybe we should talk about what we're gonna talk about because we could talk about this forever and we don't have we that have. much time i know i know this is really <laughs> this is our version of playing life on hard mode today we are talking about oh hades town hades town hades town <laughs> This is why um, I don't podcast. And, I'm cutting you off every time I can. So I'll just like be quiet is, for a while and you do what you do. <laughs> no, I refuse. In fact, this is extremely necessary. I don't know what to do without Elena. Um, she's a real glue of the show. Um, but in honor of spooky season, in honor of the, the leaves changing, in honor of timeless love, in honor of our shameless addiction, I think this is not only necessary to be on this podcast, but also a, le- a legal obligation on our part. Is it art? Yes. Is it in my yes. mind? Yes. Now, now, and if it's not, re-listen to the to the re-listen to any of it. What are you doing? Go buy a ticket. I'm seeing oh it in November, so again, I'm, I've already seen it before, so this is going to be great. <laughs> oh man, it's just so good. I'd 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 watch it. I'd watch it anywhere. So, have you seen it before? I saw it. I saw it when it came to Northwest Arkansas. I love okay. down. Nice. So, so that I, was I the mean, tour, right? One of the tours. That do? was the tour. Yes. Okay. Cool. So I, I'll have to, I'll have to put the who the cast list was, and I'll put that on the website. But like, it was a phenomenal show, and it's really embarrassing to go by yourself and then know every word to every song on stage and to have to like hold it in so that the person sitting next to you who also knows every word to every song does not like clock you as an absolute theater weeb <laughs> i don't know is it worse if the person you're going with knows like is aware of it but you know all the words and they're stuck sitting beside you and you're like just losing it is that I, is that also I, bad <laughs> I, is this is this an apocryphal story had, well, did this happen? Yeah, I went to see Hades Town pre Broadway in Edmonton, so we had a good chunk of the original <laughs> cast that like is on broad was on Broadway, and I was like oh, extremely wow. enthused about it. But I will say I didn't listen to the entire like cast version of the album before seeing it, so like I was surprised by things. But like, Ooh. big fan of the concept album, which maybe we should talk about what we're talking about a little more specifically because we're oh, just God. going in as if everyone just knows what this is. I was going to say, I am the fake fan. Please, okay. please give us our synopsis. Okay. So Hades Town is a musical, but it was a concept album. Um, it came out in 2010 as a concept album. It's by Anais Mitchell. It rolls. It's like folk. It's like a folk music kind of, kind of album to start with. Yeah. And then um, it was workshopped in New York at the New York Theater. I think it's what it's called. I've been to yeah. New York twice, but I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then... They have some of the cast there that moved on to Edmonton. Not everybody moved on to Edmonton. And that was like their pre-Broadway, well, their pre-Pre-Broadway, because then their next one was in London. And then it premiered in Broadway a few years ago. And it's still there now. And they are thriving. And it's wonderful. And I love it very much. And so, yeah. what is it about? So this is the part where I feel like you should jump in, because I am a fake <laughs> Greek, Greek mythology fan. I know 
nothing but this musical. So maybe you should Damn talk about fucking it. right. I will. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to I wanted to specifically have that sound bite. Um oh. so Hades Town is about the the Greek tragedy of Orpheus and Eurydice of a man who a, a son of the muses falls in love with this woman who tragically dies and he is so moved by the loss that he descends into the the Greek realm of hell of Hades to plead with the god himself the ruler of Hades and beg for his beloved back and the words the songs that he sings the words that he uses are so powerful that the queen of hades persephone who is also the goddess of spring queen of hell goddess of spring (laughs) peak peak inspiration but she is so moved that she pleads with her husband and hades allows for orpheus to take eurydice back but the the stipulation is because no one has ever been allowed to leave hades before there had to be a trial there had to be a test and so hades requires that orpheus and eurydice walk out of hades but orpheus must walk straight ahead and never look back he has to trust that Eurydice is there in order for for them to leave and because this is a tragedy because this is a Greek tale because of the fact that we can't have anything nice at the last minute at the final hour as they're approaching the the cave of Hades the mouth to to the underworld Orpheus panicked that his beloved is not there that he has been cheated that he has been lied to turns around and he is confronted face to face with his beloved before she is dragged back to Hades (sighs) and we'll sing it again (laughs) sorry I am cackling and I don't need to cackle (laughs) we sing it anyway um he he goes on to live a, a like a life as a nomad and uh vows to never sing again but does so many ways because he's a dramatic bitch but like he he wanders the countryside telling the tale of what he's done and then when he inevitably passes he gets to be reunited with Eurydice in Hades in Hades the video game if you if you go down certain paths though you'll find Eurydice is kind of represented as like a dryad or a a woodland creature which is a really interesting take because of like there's no there's no definitive like there's no definitive lore of like who Eurydice was, whereas Orpheus we've always known is like the the muse, the the son of a muse, which is really interesting and kind of like a fun tale of what's it like to be imbued with power but to not be main cast. Yes. Can I ask a question? <laughs> I'd love for you to ask a question. So I don't know a lot about Greek mythology. So my question is about the muses. So in the musical, which is my main knowledge base for this stuff, sure. they do refer to Eurydice as a muse for Orpheus like he is he that's what he considers her to be to him but what you're saying is like a muse is like a greater idea or like a greater kind of role in Greek mythology than maybe what she is to Orpheus so to be someone's muse is to kind of harken back to this concept of the muses muses are considered the inspirational goddesses of literature sciences and the arts they also are responsible for bringing inspiration to poetry lyrics and myths um they're they're kind of like this concept of they're the reason why people are filled with inspiration and can actually tell these tales and make these discoveries there are about nine of them in total and they all have like distinct domains because again greek mythology everyone everyone gets a little everyone gets a job so to be someone's muse as as Eurydice is for Orpheus is to be a, a font of inspiration so that somebody is able to channel like their creative energy and actually to be able to accomplish this this artistic endeavor that they're on it, it also kind of ties back to how it when when Hermes specifically refers to Orpheus being the son of a muse 
and you know how muses are and kind of referring to how he's been more or less abandoned by his mother. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the concept of inspiration is such a fleeting thing. One minute you have it, sometimes it burns extremely hot, sometimes it's all it's all consuming, but more often than not, it's it's extremely temporary and then it's gone. And so the goddesses then embody that same perspective where they're abundant, they're they're joyful, they're they're extravagant, they're they're inspiring, and then they're gone. And and it's almost impossible to be able to bring them back. They have to willingly want to be there. Okay. Still it's confusing. Greek mythology is weird. <laughs> it's it's so interesting because it's like you're just trying to justify why the world is happening and, and yeah. Hades Town does a great job of like making it feel real, bringing these like gods to life. Because what's really interesting and and why Greek mythology I think persists to this day as like a genuine source of inspiration is that you are you're looking at the gods as fickle, messy, demanding, very human characters. If we can only understand ourselves, if we as like mortals can only understand ourselves and our emotions and and the world around us is so temperamental and, and doesn't care about us, but then sometimes rewards us and, and sometimes things happen for our enemies or for us and we can't explain why. So it, if if we know that we would be able to willingly change fate and destiny for for the ones we love or for money or for power or for glory or for spite then it makes sense that our gods are exactly the same way because if they made us then clearly they had to they had to pull from some inspiration right made in their image or whatever <laughs> yeah and and it, it's one of those like it's a really classic trope in in um in religious studies it's a really interesting concept in this but like you're supposed to be able to relate to your gods because your gods were supposed to be your 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 image or you're meant to be made in that image and and in that like in that mess essentially i feel like this brings us back to hades town <laughs> <sighs> Every and day. I feel like what you're saying, so you can think about Hades Town, and there's a lot of parallels in it. Um, so I yeah. guess you could talk about the parallel of uh, Orpheus and Eurydice to Hades and Persephone. Um, yes. I guess their relationships and like what's going on with them at the time and also before. There's a lot of like parallels there. So I can definitely see what you're talking about about how having that kind of like seeing ourselves reflected in in the gods is is basically what you're talking about and also what they're doing well, in the musical too. <laughs> and isn't it isn't it interesting because Orpheus is is mortal. Right? He's he's kind of a demigod because he's been touched, you know, he's he's the son of a muse and he's all this other things, but like he's he die like he is capable of dying. Eurydice is capable of dying. The gods Ooh. are not capable of dying. So You've got Hades and Persephone who are immortal, ancient creatures, like ancient beings that for centuries have been in this dance. And their myth, very briefly, is that, I mean, just listen to chant three, <laughs> is, <laughs> is um, the myth of Hades and Persephone extends from the bigger one. But this is not a mythology episode. We will do a mythology episode. Elena would love a mythology episode. If it was a mythology episode, I would not be here. I do not know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll keep this brief. Hades, king of the underworld, terribly lonely, craves a semblance of something that is pure, something that is beautiful, something that is lasting. And one day, as he's either surveying his domain or walking among mortals, he finds this beautiful woman who is picking flowers in this field and she is truly shocker the embodiment of spring she is flowers and joy and light and he falls in love with her instantly and in some tellings he kidnaps her in my favorite tellings she goes with him and the two of them leave the mortal realm and they go into hades Persephone's mother, Demeter, is devastated 
And because she is the goddess of the harvest, she enters a miserable depression and everything dies. Everything dies. For those of you who haven't read Lore Olympus, go read Lore Olympus. This is the best retelling of, of Hades and Persephone, bar none. Demeter, miserable. She implores that Persephone be returned to her. And because of the fact that Persephone ate, in some tellings half of, in some tellings only six seeds of a pomegranate, she is bound to Hades. She, she ate from the underworld. She is of the underworld. There is no leaving. Well, that does not bode. It doesn't go over well with mom. So she throws the mortal realm into chaos. The harvest dies. People starve. And so then Zeus, king of the gods, has to intervene and say, well, how about compromise? Six months out of the year, Hades, you get to keep her. But the other six... Make Demeter happy. Thank you. And so that is kind of like the reason why we have the seasons. We start in spring. Persephone is returning to the mortal realm. Summer is that peak harvest. Fall, Hades calls and returns her back to hell. And winter is Demeter's depression. It gets so beautifully because it, it also ties then into what is a relationship? Like what? What is a marriage? What is this concept of partnership? How do you love somebody so much and are willing to do so much for them that you're like in the case of Orpheus, that you're willing to go into Hades and and rescue the woman you love. But this is the same woman that you abandoned in her time of need. Like what? What what does Hades do? And Hades (sighs) becomes capitalist. That's his solution. (laughs) That's his solution. So, like, I think, yeah, bring it back into the stuff that I know about, because I know nothing. (laughs) Um, You've read some Lore Olympus. I don't want to hear this. I read it, like, years ago during a very, very traumatic time in which we were writing our thesis. Yeah. Very dark times. (laughs) (laughs) But when when we're talking about, um, I guess, bringing it back to the actual yeah. show <laughs> uh, for for Hades in the show. So so I think it's important also to establish that Hades Town is like, I feel like it's not like set in a particular time, but it has very much the aesthetic of like, oh dear, I'm going to refer back to our last episode that we recorded and I'm going to, it's going to sound just as bad, but I think I said it reminds me of Dust Bowl era America and I know nothing <laughs> about America. <laughs> Um, but it's like in a time of it's it's, Canadian I have to I'm so sorry Um, but it reminds (laughs) me of like it's a very um, like time of it's it's, there's not a lot going on things are not good people are very poor um, impoverished Um, Persephone is like the light of their life uh, when she comes into town um, and there are trains, which makes me, for some reason, think of like America. <laughs> we have trains too, but I'm like America it. trains in this particular era, um, and the music style too, because it's it's very folk, but there's also a lot of jazz elements. So you know, you're thinking of like early 20th century stuff going on, mm-hmm. but you also have oil drums, automobiles. You got like yeah. all this kind of stuff going on in the background. You're not seeing cars on stage, but Hades, for oh. instance, is like. Your your number one capitalist guy in the in the early twentieth century, he he's making oil. Well, he's not making it. Yeah, he's getting oil from his workers, and he's like, and he loves using it. the dead people to get the oil. It's it's like kind of in the background, but the more you listen to it, you're like, whoa, what's up with this dude? What's he up to? Um, but he's exploiting you know, his it's... workers. He's making them sign contracts and all this stuff. And you're like, do I? Can I not like Hades at all? <laughs> Major capitalist vibes. Do I want to join a union? <laughs> Do I want to be a part of a labor union right now? Um, which essentially yes. is kind of what ha- I just was re-listening to it the past couple of weeks. Yeah, and essentially yeah. that's kind of what happens. Um, yeah, there's a song kind of in the middle of the second act called "Is It True," Ugh. and basically it's like Orpheus he's gone down to the underworld. He's gonna get Eurydice back, but he just found out the Eurydice actually signed a contract. She went willingly. She's in to a me, right that's to work state. Dubious. She's like. She signs that contract, but I don't think she was fully informed. She needed somebody there to help her out. She needed some her her union representative to help her. 
No one was there to support your to see when she uh, signed that contract. Lindsay, I'm so sorry, but much like Dust Bowl America, <laughs> current America has a lot of the same standards of right to work states are right to work. I'm so sorry. I know that this is not good, but I need people to know their rights. <laughs> and if you you don't have a right to work, that's not how it works. It's so confusing. It's, not, it's, uh, it's fine. It's so good. But, but uh, I really actually... Is it true? <laughs> is it true? Yes. We'll get back to that. But is it true, basically, is him being like, things could be better. Things shouldn't be like this. Why can't we look each other in the eye? What's going on? This is so wrong. And then that basically it cre- essentially creates them to like come together uh, and kind of in like a, a fun little Hades town labor union. <laughs> Which are words so that I didn't think I'd say. Well, you know, everybody knows that the walls have ears. The walls have ears. And that's like the interesting thing too, because um I feel like we should talk about the wall. <laughs> I think the wall's really important. Oh my god. Oh, the wall is so important. I, I, I will make one comment about your Dust Bowl analogy. I think it's also oh no. really appropriate. I think it's really appropriate. And then also, this is also the same time period of like the Gilded Age, right? Where yes. you have the, you have industry, you have, you have uh, advancements, you have these technological amazements, you, you have gold and skyscrapers and every and and all oh, steel and all of these things are finally possible and America is, is really on track and it's also gilded which means that you it's beautiful on the surface but it's hiding this rot that's beneath it yeah and i think you know hades is in, in especially when you know you back in act 1 when you're you're finally there and during chant and you're have Persephone frustrated and and angry because what is this? What have you done? What yep. what what are you? Why is this happening? Why is this what you choose to do? Who are you? I think it's been interesting there that you kind of touched on. So like you think about the Gilded Age, you think of like yeah, like gold and silver and all this kind of stuff. And it's the interesting is the visuals of this musical are like very much like browns and grays um yeah. except for persephone and argue no i'd say just persephone because she wears green yeah. in the first act of the musical um and then also uh orpheus has like i think he has a like a red bandana if i remember yeah correctly. he's got the red bandana and then the the, the carnation is, is a carnation oh my gosh is, i'm also not a botanist so i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i think it's a carnation because carnation a big, a, a big old death. carnation <laughs> Um, so, like, the only things you're, like, seeing are, like, red and green outside of, like, kind of this really, like, muted, earthy kind of color scheme. Um, yeah, and, like, electricity is just kind of becoming a thing as well in the show, which yeah. gives you the sense of, like, yeah, it's kind of at that, that starting point of, like, we're all getting lights in our homes and that kind of thing. But we have um, black gold. We have yeah, oil. We have, exactly. We have all of the riches of the earth, right? Because Hades is meant to be this domain of opulent wealth because you have you have all of the minerals all of the of the precious metals all of the gems everything that comes from the earth is his domain so this is a very rich man mm-hmm. who ah, ah this is a very rich man who is very capable of giving you a job mm-hmm. and, and that's what? part of it it's he says i've yeah. given them bed and board and that's kind of like oh. all they oh. care about and the purpose is to build the wall. And it's just, yeah, it, it feels like and why, why very, do very wall, timely. <laughs> I, I know like it felt very timely when we initially recorded our secret episode a couple of years ago. But like, I don't know, man, it feels even more so there's more going on. And I'm, every time I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, this this mm. this is like super relevant. And this feels like really, really important right now <laughs> um especially with we had strikes like strikes going on right and they're kind of some of them are coming to an end some are successful some are still going on and it makes you think about like just people being a collective and coming together to kind of make things happen and i this time around on, the, on my listen was like the thing that really focused on was like the memory loss kind of like how yeah. when you're working you kind of like forget who you are and i was like yeah. man i started thinking about like i can't i'm gonna bring this up on a podcast but like 
AI and like that was a huge concern for like the writers and for the actors like yeah we can't have AI doing this and like I feel like AI kind of is like a mindless thing sometimes and that kind of got me thinking about that I don't have like a connected thought about it I'm just thinking about no, it no but but like what if all the words that you do and all the words that you say and you throw it into this into this machine right into this you you return to being a cog in the wheel and that the work mm-hmm. you do is impersonal because it, you're you're working towards this larger goal and what is this larger goal well it's to do the goal exactly and, and that's and essentially by making Hades like a just kind of like a big old generic capitalist just who's like being an oil magnate just... getting his oil and all that kind of stuff you get a real sense of that where you're like yeah the work that they're doing it doesn't feel like it's super valued even though like what they're doing is basically giving him all of the the power exactly yeah and the funny thing in this musical is that the power that he wants he is he misses his wife that's important (laughs) he misses persephone so much and he's like what if i built a power grid underground and it's like it was for you and she's like i don't care this is so dumb (laughs) it's it's like it's it's like it's the love story of when a granola girl starts dating and then marries a finance tech bro. Dark times. And she goes, <laughs> "Why, why are you doing any of this? None of this matters. What the fuck is this?" And he's like, "Well, I love and miss you, and I am processing this by exploiting labor." Yep, that's that's Hades. That's what he's doing. He's like, I miss you so much. I'm gonna be a terrible person. Um, I, yeah, not I good. Just, it's not good. I, well, but also like it it tells the story of what is what is fear, right? Like I so this musical is a lyrical masterpiece. Yeah, the we words, can't even get into that. We can't get into you know that. What I mean, we can't. <laughs> but like, if 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 we we're given if we if we could if we eventually break down and make a Hades Town podcast, we'll promote it on this feed. But like <laughs> the writing in this in the show is so good. The music is very compelling. But what I like I'm so fascinated by is like the fact that you understand where all of these characters are coming from you 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 can follow the jealousy you can follow the the hurt and the loss and the anger and and also like i i think for for those of us who have either been in long distance relationships or like have have been in situations in which like you have to be separated from the person you love for months at a time and you just quietly feel that build up and that anger and that fear of like, well, why would they want to be with me? And, and, and Hades feels it. Hades, who has been married to this woman. And I agree. I, I, we are, we have been robbed by Hermes is, uh, the, the, when they cut the, they do this fight every year. Every year they have this fight. Yeah. Every year. (laughs) Every year they have this fight, but it's, it's just, it's so tragic because of the fact that like she has to come back she is bound to this place there is nothing you can't you can't cheat fate and lord knows they try she loves him and and, and it's it's part of the why like how long is probably my favorite song on the on the albums yes very good. Because of the fact that it it brings you back to Hades and Persephone, mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it brings you back to like why why are we doing this? Why are we fighting? What is this miscommunication? And it's that burning, and it's that inevitability. Like there is. Ugh. I think I think I was thinking about this. I think this movie like lives and dies on the fact that it has. Hades and Persephone um, yeah. in it. I think without them, it's just it, it wouldn't have enough depth to to really like be as like prolific compelling. as it is now yeah. and compelling. Yeah. And I think if you look at kind of all the iterations that we have, and 
I think it's really unique that we have all these like different versions of the show and from concept album to kind of Broadway now you can kind of see that like certain songs that haven't changed are usually the Hades Persephone ones with it's like how long and like that has always been there and I think it's like one of the only ones too that like literally no lyrics have changed from like yeah the original one that was like on her a nice Mitchell's album like before the concept album nothing which has is changed crazy yeah. which is crazy and I think like it, it we we literally had a full hour long conversation about like specific music like specific songs from this album but like yeah. for for me it really does come back to why are we doing this how long is this going to go on why are we mm-hmm. like what is this constant struggle and it's this understanding of that like no, 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 no. We love each other, and how long? Yeah. Just as long as I am your wife. Ugh. Ugh. I think what this show does really well, and like, don't, please don't, please don't get no. me in trouble. But like, I'm gonna say a wacky thing. Do it. Go, <laughs> I think that this show friends. does a really good job of. Well, you know this. The best villain <laughs> song. Of all time, we've we've argued about this. How it's the best one? Um, it is. Uh, his kiss the riot, right? That's what it's called. Yes, I his got it. His kiss the, the riot. riot. I think that's it's one of the best ones because you get like an extreme insight into like what is going on in Hades brain. And yeah. I also think there's another track too. So we haven't even talked about this, but there the know. fates are in this show too. So there's oh, three, the fates. three the people fates. who are playing the fates. They have a song near the end too around the His Kiss the Riot where basically they're like, you can't do this because if you do this, they're going to think this about you. And if you do that, they're going to think that about you. And that's not good. You have to figure out something to do in the middle here that like, like it's, it's so good because like the fates are like in everyone's business. Like (laughs) they're bothering everybody. Hades to Eurydice to Orpheus I don't think they bother Persephone too much, but, like, everybody else is having a rough time out there with the mates. I remember walking out of the show and being, like, to my friends saying, like, I I love them. They're they're bitches. They're the worst. Like, I love them so much. Persephone is very drunk, to be fair. For the majority of this, she is so blasted off of her face to cope with, like, her uh, enjoyable hell that she's, like, even if the fates could, could bother, yeah, why would they? Like, I think... I think what I'm trying to say, which is like, I've been on so many different thought path, like thought lines. I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But I think what the show is really good at is giving you that gray area of like, <laughs> everyone's having a rough time and here's why, and here's what they're thinking about. Yeah. And here's why the decisions, like here's the decisions they've made and here's why they've made those decisions. And, and like, and it's so clear. It's, so, good. it's yeah. so clear. Like you, you can hate Hades, and I think it's it's very appropriate, but you know why he's doing the things that he's doing. You yep. understand, like, and and it also does the great thing of, like, audience knowledge versus state, like, character no- knowledge, because, like, mm-hmm. we get word to the wise, his kiss the riot, and then yeah. the wait for me, uh, like, sequel immediately afterwards, is just is such a is such a powerful combination because you can hear the fear in Orpheus and Eurydice when when Hermes says you can leave but there's a catch yeah and 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 that fear then ties immediately back to what what the fates were saying but the only reason why the fates were saying hey buddy if you uh if you let him go you're a spineless king and you'll never get them in line again. But if you, if you don't, then you're a heartless man. Like there's no winning. You fucked up. And why did you fuck up? Oh, because Orpheus reminded you that you're in love with your wife. Orpheus made you cry, bitch. And I also cried. I just want that on the record. I've I've cried. (laughs) Crying alone. alone I think he also made Persephone cry in the version that I saw. Oh. Were, like tears she was like wiping away and i was like oh it's like profound <laughs> it's, it's profound it's so beautiful and then they dance together and then you're sobbing and then you know what's coming the oh rest of us are fucking fools um we we made a great point last time last <laughs> time we did this of like 
is this is this musical a story or is it a performance of a story and i think mm. like it's a, that it's such a it's such a thin line because like we know that it's a performance of a story we yeah. we have our narrator hermes is there with us the entire time the fates are with us the entire time but we get so lost in the story and in the in the telling that we can't we can't believe that it doesn't end well we can't believe that orpheus would turn around we can't believe that there isn't closure and and that the the that there's so much profound loss like it can't this can't be and then he turns around and it's sad every time it's very sad i don't think i listened to the last track too frequently because i'm like doubt comes in kills me every time um yeah i'm seeing the musical again in november and i'm like it's gonna be a rough time for me. It's gonna it be a rough time. It is. If you want to do a Hades Town reprise, this is an absolute perfect time. Like, oh boy. I, I think, I think this is an, an incredible story, and an extremely clever retelling of a Greek tragedy. I think <laughs> I want to ask you a question because this is important hear. to me now. Yes. I want to know because I know this is a really hard question. If I just said, "What's your favorite song?" What are your favorite? three songs because i'm nice and i give you three options <laughs> you are kinder and than why? i ever I will want be okay I also okay, want okay okay so i okay i really uh, I've, I've already outed myself right like i think i think how long is always it's either my top song or it's in my top three like it it fluctuates but i i am so obsessed with their interactions Mm-hmm. And that whole like that whole moment is just so good, and it's really powerful in the musical as well because they're confronting each other, and they don't like they barely they barely get to interact one on one in the play. Like even during um even during chant, they're not really alone. Mm-hmm. They're, they're you know what I mean? Like I I just. <laughs> Um, that one's super tasty. I've I've recently gotten really obsessed with Our Lady of the Underground. It's a good one. It's uh, fantastic. It, it's a great opener. Everyone, everyone, the whole vibe changes because Persephone gets the step into my office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, good. A little moonshine ain't no sin. Tell my husband to take his time with the boss won't know. The boss won't mind. <gasps> he won't mind. Lindsay, I don't know if you remember this. And I don't know if I actually said it in the last one or if I just put it in my notes. Mm. Um, Fun fact about Hadestown. The only people who say Persephone's name are demigods and gods. That was <laughs> No, 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 no. Yes. Oh, Orpheus is a demigod, right? I was like, Orpheus, Orpheus does. Orpheus this is why is I'm a not demigod. a Greek mythology expert. <laughs> ah, interesting. Because I don't... I, 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 I like, can't... out of respect or something, maybe? I don't know. I'm I, making they, things up. Be, but you really feel it in Our Lady in the Underground, because, like, when she keeps calling, what's my name? Nobody says it. She is the it's only like one who she's... introduces herself living it up on top yeah the same thing happens but instead she's above ground <laughs> and orpheus in living it up on top is the only one who says her name yeah which you know? speaking of the new york theater workshop version the toast on that one it's so cute it's so delightful because it's like live and everyone's uncomfortable and i love it it's just okay. so what's your third song i just you number three my third song is is the concept album's version of Wedding Song, but it is Wedding Song. <laughs> uh, class, not to, classic. Not to be, not to be, it's just, it's, um, I told you, I'll say it a thousand times, we were robbed, I understand why we couldn't, but we were robbed when, when the Broadway musical did not open with Wedding Song. I think it's yeah. fun, I think it sets the tone, I think it understands, like, what Orpheus is trying to promise, and I think the I I yeah. lover tell me 
if you're able, who's going to lay the wedding table, times being what they are. Oh, it is clap good. back. And Orpheus <laughs> is like, I love you so much. I am so into this. I am so powerful and so cool and so interesting that I'm literally going to bend the world's whim so that I can provide for you. I, I'm a sucker. I, I love love. And <laughs> Lindsay, it's only oh, fair. Gosh. What are you worth yeah. three? Okay, this is so hard for me. I said three, and I'm like, can I increase it to five? Because I'm can like, I, can I? No. I'm so, I'm so tired. Um, <laughs> I'm so tired of my own, my own little puzzles I created for myself. Like, Epic three is always my favorite. <laughs> Epic three, bar yeah. none, always my favorite. But I can't, I can't go with the obvious. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm a real wild card. Um, okay. I'm gonna tell the audience what just happened. I lost Stephanie. Okay. She turned around. And no, I turned around and she disappeared. You she's gone. And I was gone. I my internet's solid, but she's back. We figured it out. We got her back. Oh my god! And now I get to talk so about funny. my favorite tracks because I'm special too, and I get an extra track because I'm like because I'm special because I, I lost you and I was alone. I, so I also gave you ten minutes to think about what your favorite song was. It was less than that, but I'll think whatever. It felt like longer. I'm going to start with my favorite fate track next to what the, When the Chips Are Down, which I can't go with that because it's a basic choice. Oh. When the Chips Are Down is a basic choice. Okay. I can't choose it. I love it. Every time I hear it, I'm like, it's the best track on every single version. It's good. It's every single version is good. It's never changed either. I don't think either. Yeah, it's good. But my favorite hate, Fates track apart from that is Way Down Hades Town 2. Listen to it. It's good. Um, basically this is the track where, um, it's only on the New York theater workshop version. It's when Eurydice has, is now working in the underground and she's like, I've made the right decision. And they're like, are you sure you did? Um, cause the fates are, we mean. get that version. We get that version as way down Hades town reprise. Yeah. Um, after our lady of the underground on the yeah Broadway album, but this version's better. I would argue I believe it's it. my favorite version of it. I think it's, um, I like the wordplay in it. I think it's really, really nice and clean and it like, it's very, it's very satisfying. Um, like, you know, you sell your soul, you get your due. That is all we promised you. Just really nice, clean little rhymes. I love it. Ugh. Um, Ugh. gosh, there's so Damn. many lines this I could just read. Cause I, I, I love it so much. And Hades is also in this song too. Um, really? I don't think we've talked about how good Patrick Page is in all of these recordings. He wasn't on concept album, but no. everything else he's on. Him and Amber Gray, who plays Persephone, they're like Ugh. the ultimate. They're so good. They're they're in every version that after the concept album, and it's just wonderful. Um, but like, there's a specific line in Wait on Haiti Ta- Hades Town Two where Hades joins in with the Fates, where it says shoveling coal in a big black hole to keep his boiler boiling and because he can go uh, so low it just sound it's just uh, it's so it's so good but my favorite uh, line just because it like it just sounds sounds really really nice um i'm gonna read like a whole verse and i'm so sorry this is what you get no that's fine for leaving me i've been doing it for you you know <laughs> um so down in the river of oblivion you kissed your little life goodbye and hades lays, laid his hands on you and gave you everlasting life and everlasting overtime in the mine, the mil- the mill, and the machinery, running his old assembly line from Pluto to the Pleiades. Very good. I like words. <laughs> oh, man. But it's just, it's so clean. Oh. And Pluto, Pluto mm-hmm. being the Roman version of Hades, also fantastic. It's good. Oh. There's one thing I know. It's, it's that. good. <laughs> And then there's one more verse. It's the end of the song. It's so, again, such a nice... So the nice thing about the song is that at the end, it kind of sounds like it's actually, like, rolling, if that makes sense. Like, it slows down, so it yeah. feels like it, like they're rolling. And it says, Saw that wheel up in the sky, heard the big bell tolling, a lot of souls have gotta die <sighs> to keep the rust belt rolling. To the a rust lot belt of spirits rolling. gotta break to make the underworld go round. Way down Hades Town. Way down under the ground. It's Ugh. so good. And like, I I think about this one whenever I listen to the album, and I'm like, I wish this one was kept around, but I get why it wasn't because it is very like, a lot of the changes that they made from like Theater Workshop 
to Broadway is like, let's make things a little more literal and like make more sense. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, it's for it's for an audience. We need to be able it. to like streamline this. I get it. My number two, because I'm allowed another one, okay. is His Kiss the yes. Riot. Yes. And of course. you know, my take on this is that the accordion in this is incredible. I love me some accordion. <laughs> what, what did you What did you specifically say? Um, uh, it's accordion. accordion supremacy. <laughs> Naturally. This was a different time. Naturally. It was 2021. The internet lingo was different. <laughs> we don't we don't talk about it, but we also do. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, his kiss the riot. It's a good one. I think we've already talked about it a little bit. It's a Haiti song. Yeah. He's like, nah. boo, Orpheus. No, that's my take on it. It's really good. Accordion Beautiful. in it is incredible. I love Deadly. accordion. You know what I want? I want more accordion in mainstream. I need more music. accordion. Get it back to yeah. me. Yeah, agreed. Cowards, like bring it back. We're bringing back the saxophone, which I've been asking for for years. Bring back the accordion. Just bring it back. Okay, what is your third choice? I don't know. There's so many tracks. That's the problem. See, this is the thing. We have a, an abundance of tracks, and it's it's hurting my heart. Um. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um. I think I gotta go for like a little a little basic one. Um, and I'm going to yep. go with you on concept album. I love wait for me. I think it's great. Every version of it's pretty solid. Um, but yeah. because it was the first one I listened to, I do have like a soft spot for the original concept album version because Hermes in that one, you really get a sense that he's, he's, he's talking through like, I don't know what you call it. Like when you're on a train and they're talking through a walkie talkie, it sounds like that. Yeah. It has that vibe to it. Yeah. And I love it. It's so good. And they actually put like dog barking sound effects in it, which I always forget about. Well, and it makes you cackle. And then it's also like, it's half whispered too. It's so Which, which good. makes you feel like, like you're actually being let in on a secret. How to get to Hades town. It's just, it's so, it's so, it makes you feel afraid. Yes. Yes. Which is what you're supposed to, because, hey, you're getting top secret. Nobody knows about this information. And and Hades is just giving it to Orpheus because his mother was a friend of his. Yes. And I, because I'm, I'm so special, yeah. I get a fourth track. And this is kind of like a bonus oh, okay. because I, I love talking about this because it's like, it's, I, I understand why they, they had to change it and... Yes, I am that person <laughs> who has um, the book called Working on a Song, The Lyrics of Hades Town by Anais Mitchell. Because I was like, I need this. This is important to me. Every musical I love, I have to buy the book about. I have two musical books. It's this one. Is this why you have War and Peace? And Natasha Pierre and the Comet of 1812. Uh, yes, that's why I read War and Peace was because of that musical. I live a very dark media-driven life. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, this is going on the internet. <laughs> so, my favorite fourth track is it's called Lover's Desire. It's on the concept album. And I think it made it yes. I think it made it all the way to at least Edmonton, if not London as well, but they switched it for Broadway. Um the reason they removed it was because it's a traditional folk folk song. It's like an Afghan folk song. Um it's now called epic three instrumental um but the original is really 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 lovely and it's really sweet and that's the song that persephone and hades dance to and it's really really nice and i like it a lot and that's my only take on it but you know that's i'm a big fan of folk music um so whenever yeah. we incorporate like actual folk music into stuff i get really excited i do love me some folk music and An anais mitchell is also notorious for like well, not notorious. I don't know why I'm calling her notorious. She's, um, she's, so she's notorious. Um, no, but she, a lot of her stuff Villain. before this and like even after with her new band, Bonnie Light Horseman, like they do pull uh -huh. from like traditional folk, like English folk music, English language folk music. And like, I'm a big fan of that stuff. So I get really excited whenever we see any kind of like actual like stuff coming from history. I'm like, ooh, how exciting. But because. Except for Broadway Greek mythology. Rules, yeah. Greek mythology. What do you mean? What? What? <laughs> you love it when it comes from history because you love to tie into it, except for Greek mythology. Which I know nothing which about. Which you know anything about? I know nothing about. I grew up on, like, folk music, so that's all I really know. <laughs> I don't know actual 
history or knowledge. <laughs> I just love watching them dance. I'm like, oh, it's so good. It, 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 what a great album! Like, what a great, what a great song. Truly, and and the concept album is just so good. Yeah, um, I think if I was like recommending, if someone's made it this far and has not listened to the album or any of them or seen the show. I'm so it's, sorry, but my recommendation to you is you listen to the concept album, then you can listen to the workshop, and then you can listen to the full Broadway album. Or, second recommendation, do what Stephanie did. Broadway album. Yes. Yes. Concept album. Then I did concept album, yeah. And then workshop. And then I went, and then workshop. See, I, I don't know, man. I'm a big, I'm a big Nerd Theater Workshop truther. I love it. <laughs> Again, you, uh, um, what did this say? You edited the Hades Town wiki pre Broadway. One time. Crazy. I was like, I gotta fix this. This is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you, I, I am the fake fan. You are the lifer. I, you know. We're the- fake fans in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot about Greek mythology. I know nothing about it. Did you know that I took, I, I that. took Latin in my undergrad, which I know is not Greek. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's not Greek. But again, you know, there's you a did lot know of Pluto. overlap with like mythology stuff going on. And I feel like yeah. a lot of people who are like into Greek mythology know a lot about like Roman stuff. And I'm like, I know nothing. I took Latin. Lindsay, I don't, oh, I don't want to think about the Roman Empire. I don't want to fucking think about I, the Roman Empire. I don't think First about of all, it. I hate, <laughs> I just, I don't. I think about Hades Town. Yeah. I think about Hades Town. And that's my Roman Empire. <laughs> Someone on TikTok was like, the gays don't have a Roman Empire. What are you talking? Of course, the gays have a Roman Empire. It's the Greek Empire. It's the Greek, you trying to tell it's me? Greek mythology. Are you try- what are you talking it's about? It's Greek mythology. <laughs> like we have this. We've gone over this. And it's you know what we we got our media. Our we got our nation media. We got Hades Town, and we got Hades the video we got game. Hades Town, which it's true. That's all we need. And it runs the fucking gambit. Eventually, we'll have Hades too, and the trifecta will be complete. <sighs> I'm so excited. The, the sound. Uh, it's fine. Um, Anais Mitchell should work on the concept uh, music mm-hmm. for Hades, too. Honestly. I'll be I, whack. I, it's, it's, what is this podcast I about? I would die. <laughs> <laughs> Not art. That's for fucking I was sure. going to say, I feel like and we finally have we figured out the name and we've like met it. Bet you it just was an art pa- podcast. Because otherwise, bet- we're going to talk to you about Hades Town for a really long time. <laughs> And then it will be back soon to 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 hold me back, and and Lindsay will. I don't think Elena will want to talk to me ever again because I've like ruined your podcast. So but it's fine. No, you wish. Bring me back. You wish. Bring me back <laughs> to talk about other musicals. I only know well, I know a few others, but like I can't share those deep shames unless we talk about them for an hour a piece. Unless we talk and about publish it, it online. Oh my God. <laughs> Promises, promises, Lindsay. And for, in fact, for more promises, flowers, great loves, Greek tragedies, and f- updates, newsletters, transcripts, blog posts, and more, head on over to our website at bywrpod.com. I don't know your podcast ending as well. I'm so sorry. I'm going to let fine. you keep going with this. I'm just like, I'm <laughs> intrigued that you're so good at this. <laughs> this is so funny to me because I've never done the full thing by myself. So Oh, you're solo yeah. on this one. <laughs> I'm solo. I'm solo. You can find the show at BYW Art Pod on Instagram. And you can find us on YouTube at BYW Art Pod. You can also email us at BYWArtPod at gmail.com. And of course, you can check us out on Patreon. Our Patreon is the best way to support us if you like the work that we're doing here at BiWAP. So come say hi, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and remember, <laughs> when in doubt, titty out. Thanks, guys. Bye! Bye, everyone. Bye, thank you. <laughs>